I wanted to have my patient with me for today's video, but he was not offered. So to save your time, I will directly dive into how I treated this patient's uh, fatty liver. Guys, have you heard of the foie gras? It's used a lot in high-end cuisine. Foie gras is the French word for fatty liver. What do you think you need to feed a goose to fatten its liver? In this picture, you can see they are feeding the goose through a strange funnel. What exactly are they feeding it? Since they want to fatten the liver, you'd think they would feed something very fatty, right? But as you can see in this picture, they are feeding it corn, not fat. It's mostly a high grain diet. In other words, they are overfeeding carbohydrates. Foie gras contains 44 grams of fat per 100 grams. Even just over 5% fat qualifies as a fatty liver. And foie gras is a 44% fat. When you consume carbohydrate, the secretion of insulin, the only hormone that synthesizes fat, increases. As insulin level increases, uh, fat synthesis in the liver also increases. So, if you overconsume carbohydrates, you can easily develop a fatty liver. Fatty liver is a not made from fat. Just like a goose gain fat from eating corn, a person who overeats carbohydrates can increase the liver fat by 27% in just 3 weeks. New fat synthesis in the liver also increased by 27%. Creating a fatty liver is a simple, just to eat a diet high in carbohydrates. So, what kind of diet is most effective in reversing fatty liver? It's very simple, just do the opposite. Let me show you through research. In this study, one group followed a standard diet, another group followed a low-carb, high-fat diet. The third group did intermittent calorie restriction, consuming less than 600 calories two days a week. The intermittent fasting group did not change their fat or carbohydrate intake, while the low-carb, high-fat group reduced the carbohydrate intake by 70% and increased the fat intake by 99%. When we look at the reduction in the liver fat, the standard diet group saw a 16.8% decrease, while the other groups experienced more than a 50% reduction. This shows that both the low-carb, high-fat diet and intermittent fasting can help treat fatty liver. This next study is also quite fascinating. It compares a fat-restricted diet and carbohydrate-restricted diet in teenagers with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease over 8 weeks. As you can see in this chart, the FRD group lost 0.4 kg while the CRD group lost 3 kg. There was also a difference about 1 point in BMI and looking at the total body fat, the FRD group lost 0.1 kg while the CRD group lost 2.5. Abdominal fat also decreased by 1.5 kg in the CRD group. Most importantly, liver fat decreased by 1.8% in the FRD group but by 6% in the CRD group. So, which diet would you choose? Among carbohydrates, the most problematic is a fructose. The metabolism of fructose is very similar to alcohol. If there is a difference, the fructose doesn't give you hangover. Carbohydrates like rice, wheat, and corn are mostly made up of glucose. So what is the fructose? The word literally came from the fruit. So, you would think the fruit has a lot of fructose, right? But since the fructose in the fruit is natural, you just need to avoid overconsumption. So, what is the main source of fructose in our diet? It's sugar. Sugar is made up of one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule. So, eating one molecule of sugar is like having one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. Glucose can be used by almost every cell in the body, but like alcohol, uh, fructose can only be processed in the liver. So in other words, it's similar to the alcohol. This graph shows sugar consumption in the US over the past 200 years. As I mentioned earlier, sugar is a problem because it contains a fructose. 200 years ago, sugar consumption was almost non-existent, but now, each person consumes up to 120 pounds per year. If the average is 120 pounds, someone with a sweet tooth could easily be consuming more than 150 pounds. This is a serious problem. 
I did baking with my wife once, and even though we used the recipe with as little sugar as possible, we were shocked by the amount of the sugar that we had to put in. If this is how much sugar that goes into the homemade bread, imagine how much sugar is in store bread. If you have done baking at least once, you will know what I mean. This video is a presentation by Dr. Lustig. I highly recommend it that you watch it if you haven't already. It has a 25 million views. It's an hour and a half long video, so let me just grab a small piece from it. Now, you wouldn't think twice about not giving your kid a Budweiser, but you don't think twice about giving your kid a can of Coke. But they're the same, in the same dosing, for the same reason, through the same mechanism. Fructose is ethanol without the buzz. Hematologic disorders, electrolyte abnormalities, hypertension, cardiac dilatation, cardiomyopathy, dyslipidemia, pancreatitis, malnutrition, obesity, hepatic dysfunction, that's alcoholic steatohepatitis, fetal alcohol syndrome, and addiction. Here's fructose, eight out of 12. Why? Because they do the same thing, because they're metabolized the same way, because they are the same. They come from the same place, right? Did you know that many monks in Thailand have serious fatty liver issue and are obese? They are not allowed to eat food after 12 p.m., but drinking liquid is okay. So they end up drinking sugary soda after 12 p.m. Now you understand how dangerous fructose can be, right? Even just six days of high fructose intake increased fasting triglyceride level by 79% and new fat synthesis in the liver by six times. This is enough to call fructose a fatty liver factory. Fatty liver is made from fat itself. It's mainly caused by excessive intake of glucose and fructose. In this study, one group ate a low fructose diet while another group followed a standard diet without specific fructose restriction. In the low fructose group, the average liver fat content dropped significantly from 27% to 17%. There was a no significant change in the standard diet group. So it's safe to say the less fructose you consume, the healthier your liver becomes. I must say, reducing fructose is far more effective than taking various liver supplements. So I want to emphasize that it is very important to reduce the foods high in fructose as much as possible for your health. Of course, fructose from fruit is better than artificial sugar or syrup but excessive consumption is just as harmful as a drinking alcohol. There is another important food to avoid just as much as fructose. If you can manage this, your fatty liver will improve even faster. Omega-3 and omega-6 have a competing effect. As you can see in this graph, when one increases, the other decreases. Modern people consume omega-6 about 20 times more than omega-3. This could cause a lack of omega-3. The oil we commonly use for cooking are major source of excessive omega-6 intake. In fact, 70% of omega-6 intake come from cooking oil or margarine. This study is also very important. It analyzed the effect of omega-3 fatty acid in non alcoholic fatty liver disease. Omega-3 supplementation reduced total liver fat, decreased gamma GT, and triglyceride and increased HDL in blood work. These changes are indication of improvement in fatty liver. So this research team emphasized using omega-3 for treating fatty liver. I think if omega-3 treatment was done without omega-6 intake, the result would have been even more dramatic. There are already many studies on omega-3 for fatty liver. Combining these studies, Fatty liver patients have lower dietary omega-3 intake compared to a healthy individual and a much higher omega-6 intake. Additionally, carbohydrate intake is significantly higher in fatty liver patients. Other study also shows that omega-3 supplementation greatly reduces the total liver fat, and it emphasized that a high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio increased liver fat synthesis, ultimately leading to a fatty liver. In other words, consuming omega-6 fatty acid can lead to development of fatty liver.
The medication name I hear the most often from my office is Tylenol. If you are healthy and take it occasionally, it's usually fine. But if you have a fatty liver or liver issue, you need to be careful. Acetaminophen modified release has already been banned in Europe due to its liver toxicity. But this applies to both modified release and regular formulation. Modified release just to take effect more slowly, making the risk of overdosing higher compared to the regular form. So you should not think regular Tylenol is entirely safe. For reference, I personally take ibuprofen when I'm in pain. Sometimes patients think ibuprofen should only be taken when you have a fever, but that's not true. Acetaminophen can convert into NAPQI in the liver, and this NAPQI is a highly toxic substance to the liver. Its toxicity is so severe that it doesn't just damage the liver cells. It can actually cause them to necrotize. So if you have a liver issue, please be extra cautious. I have often seen doctors at the urgent care or out of uh, primary care miss this detail. So please make sure you verify this yourself. Some doctors prescribe um, NAC along with the acetaminophen for patient with the liver issue. So please be sure to ask your doctor about this. It is said that the minimum dose that can cause liver failure in adults is 7 to 8 grams. That's roughly 14 to 16 capsules. Taking more than 14 pills at once won't just damage your liver. You're just saying goodbye to the liver forever. So if you have a chronic liver disease or drink alcohol frequently, it's best to avoid Tylenol. The day after drinking, you might have headache body ache, and all kinds of hangover symptoms. This is what worries me the most. If you take Tylenol in this situation, the risk of liver toxicity increases significantly. So please avoid taking Tylenol in this situation and use all natural products for hangovers. If you can avoid just these five things, your fatty liver can definitely improve. Remember, carbohydrates, fructose, omega-6, alcohol, and Tylenol. Of course, it won't be 100%, but I can confidently tell you that with your determination, tomorrow will be definitely better. Hope this video was helpful, and if you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, health is wealth, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Shun, making health easy for you. See you next week.